right. Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show here live at Paint Box Bistro, 555 Dundas Street East. And how's everybody doing? Are you doing excelente? I feel the excelente vibes here. I'm so happy to be back. Uh, it feels like it's been such a long time, and uh, I really uh, I love coming here and sharing and meeting um, awesome people. Uh, and and look at this beautiful arrangement here. We have to give mad love to our event sponsor, uh, Decor. Uh, that's Emmanuel uh, Decor Inc. They are fantastic. Elizabeth Lakatosh and her beautiful family. They 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 just they just knock it out of the ballpark every single time and uh, it's just absolutely beauting. So I just wanted to say thank you, thank you very much. Um, so we've got a lot going on in the world. So I want to ask you something before we get anything going. What time is it? That's right, it's time for Hot Topics. And uh, joining me today, um, we're going to play a little music with our favorite DJ, DJ Josh Clark. Welcome him to the show. <laughs> he's back. And yes, he's still not my son. But uh, he could be. He's, he's, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. So, um, any Prince fans here? Put up your hand. Make some noise if you like Prince. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm a, I'm a huge Prince fan. I've been following him since I was 14. Now, did you know that in Minnesota, the governor has officially declared June 7th, which is, uh, which would have been Prince's birthday, his 58th birthday, Prince Day. Did you hear about that? Yeah, June 7th is Prince Day. So everyone, he says, in the state should wear uh, their favorite purple and, you know, maybe have, uh, you know, the flashy stiletto um, uh, pumps that he used to wear on stage. Uh, I just, I just, I, I'm so excited to don my purple June 7th for that day. So um, everyone here have a favorite Prince song? Purple Rain. Purple Rain? Uh, what's another song you like? Purple Rain. You know what? I, I, I like Darling Nikki, you know? And I actually, my, my name was spelled N-I-C-K-Y until the song came around, switched it to N-I-K-K-I because of that. So I was inspired by it. So you know what? I, I think it's appropriate for us to play a little game called um, Name That Prince Song. And we've got some, uh, some great prizes, and, and Rochelle will get that for you. So um, hit it, DJ. Uh, Josh, he's going to play a few seconds of the song, and the first person to name the song properly, come on up and get your prize. Ready? Okay, kick it. What's the song? What's the song? Come on, people. What the? <laughs> oh, sorry, make some noise for uh, uh, makeup artist Julie Power. She got it right. When doves cry. Okay, somebody give her a prize. Okay, we've got two more chances. Are you ready? Okay, kick it. I heard somebody over there. Who was it? Who was it? It was Aretha, Aretha Cooper. And what was it again, loud voice? Kiss. All right, she's got it. Somebody give her a prize. Okay, last try. Name that Prince song. Okay, anybody? Name a song in 10 seconds. Anybody? Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Okay, give that to Norman Nicholson at the back. Thank you. You listed all my favorite songs. Beautiful. Um, thank you for playing. Now, I, I, I wanted to uh, do a little poll. How many people here go to Costco? Make some noise if you go to Costco, if you're like a regular Costco user. Like you go there all the time and shop. Isn't Costco amazing? It's, it's really like an experience. And, and it's not possible just to run in. You don't just run in and run out. That never happens. No, you, you go in and then you get kind of trapped. I get trapped in um, between uh, the nuts and snacks and clothing. I get, I get trapped there for about an hour plus. And you know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. I realized that Costco has this amazing effect on people because people actually pay a membership for them to sell you things. Yeah, you pay good money for that yearly. And then you end up, um, they don't give you bags at the end, right? They don't give you bags. They, they give you like a box with like a hole in it. So you end up like taking out their garbage and paying for a membership. <laughs> but there's cash back, so there are some perks. But I, I just love uh, Costco and a big shout out to Costco. They actually gave us uh, um, a little 
time to tape there uh, earlier this year. So th they're amazing. Um, and anybody here Serena Williams fan? Yes, did you hear she's gonna have a baby in the fall? She's accomplished everything in the world. Now she's gonna accomplish being a mom. Yeah, so that's amazing. So uh, we have an amazing show for you today. Uh, we, we have outstanding guests and they've got some great transformational stories for you to hear. So you don't wanna go anywhere. You're here on the Nikki Clark Show live at Paintbox Bistro. We've got DJ Josh Clark uh, to entertain us with some great music and you don't want to miss it. So come right back. We'll start soon. See you soon. Thank you for tuning in to the Nikki Clark Show uh, here at the Paintbox Bistro. And uh, sitting beside me are two beauties uh, and the brains behind the beauties of uh, an, an incredible campaign called I Am Over the Wall. Uh, please welcome uh, the author of I'm Over the Wall, Fatima Gould, and uh, the uh, founder of Synergy Media, uh, Audrey Leminski, to the show. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to see you again. Uh, you always uh, light up the stage with your great energy. So thank you for uh, making the trip back. And uh, I just want to say congratulations to Fatima on your book. I was at your book launch not too long ago, and uh, it was standing room only. Uh, so much love in the room and support. So you must be very proud. It's, it's a huge accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. I feel so blessed. God is so good. And you know, once you get a vision, he always provides a way. That's right. When there's a vision, there's provision, right? That's right. <laughs> so tell me about how you got together. Um, how, how did this connection happen? It started as a friendship, and mm. then it uh, worked out into a beautiful partnership in business. How did that happen? Well, actually, we would love to say it started in friendship. But it didn't. <laughs> we, were, um, we were part of a training and development program together. And um, Fatima, um, I was at a certain stage in the program and someone had called me to come over and ask to coach Fatima. And she didn't want me to coach her. And I did. <laughs> okay. And um, so here we, here we are, we're you know, sitting down, we're having a conversation. And through that conversation, I made Fatima cry. And, um, good cries? Or? A, well, a healing cry. A Let's healing just say cry. a healing cry. <laughs> and, um, you know, sometimes when we go through things in life, we suppress memories. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our past can haunt us. Mm -hmm. And that conversation was really about, you know, rising some awareness for herself as to why she was doing some of the things she was doing in her life. Mm -hmm. And so that's how actually our relationship started. We were in this program and truthfully, she didn't even even like me, right? So Is that true? <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> and um, so, you know, moving forward into the future, um, she created uh, a project that she wanted to write a book that was more like a workbook, yes. like a workbook booklet for, um, you know, for women. And uh, the person who was working with her at the time asked for me to come and meet Fatima. Mm -hmm. And so we sat down, we met, and you know, here are these two feisty, crazy women <laughs> going back and forth at a table, having a conversation. And in that moment, I just fell in love with her. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, she's the one. And Fatima has, I've been ghostwriting for a while, but her story was, and I didn't want to ghostwrite anymore, but her story was something I felt the world needed to know. Wow. And uh, that's how it began. Okay. Awesome. Fatima, do you want to share a little bit about uh, the take on how you got together? So everything she said is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't even tell a lie. Everything she said was correct. But the pivotal point for me was when she came to our house and it was an honor to have her in our house and we were sharing the vision about what do you do when you hit the walls of life and I tend to do this. And she gets bug-eyed and she goes, oh, I know what you're gonna call the book. You're gonna call it Over the Wall. And I went, right. <laughs> and so it started a year of IG going, I know what we should do. And me going, right. <laughs> Until we got to the book. That's how it all started. She gets an idea, she goes, right, and then that's it. 
And then the rest is history. And the rest is yes. history. Yes. Okay. So tell me a little bit about um, sometimes in people's life we hit a wall and then we get over it. What were some of the, the pivotal times in, in your life that you'd like to share? Um, I would say the first one would be migrating or immigrating back to Toronto because I was born here, mm -hmm. but I was sent to Barbados to be raised by my grandmother, like so many people. You know, when some people, when your parents migrate, there's just no support. So they send you back home to be raised by aunts, uncles, cousins, right. grandparents. And so returning back as an eight-year-old, that making new friends, people that don't look like you, sound like you, mm -hmm. you know, little children are mean. They're really, they really mean. And they're, they're, some of them bully. And so you hit a wall with that. And then what did I do to get over that wall? And then there's the wall of coming and not knowing my mom because I, I didn't know her. I left when I was 18 months and I came back when I was eight. So a lot of people go through that wall and that wall is always the toughest one to bond with somebody that's, you're supposed to be your parent, but you don't have that parental connection. So there was that wall. And then, you know, there's a wall of being a teenager and then there's a wall of being a young woman and a mom and a single mom and yeah. so many walls. Finding right? your place in life. Finding yeah. your place in life and your purpose and letting um, your faith just guide you to your passion and your purpose. And then when you start walking in that, then there's a sense of relief and there's something in the pit of your stomach that says, this is it. This is it. This is it. You know, I, um, I really enjoyed what you shared at uh, your book launch about how you met your husband. Can you just quickly tell us that for um, people who are, you know, looking to find true love and how that happened? Because you've got a really amazing story. This is true. He's cute. And I kind of like yeah, he's him. He's cute. <laughs> he's cute. And I'm like, I'm shallow. I'm going to tell you I'm shallow. He's very <laughs> cute. He cooks. He cleans. I mean, these are things on my wish list. And I got them all in spades. And he was also a musician. So he writes and plays. And he also sang at that. But Ron and I met when we were 12. And um, when I moved to Etobicoke from downtown, downtown was the transition back to Toronto. And then going to Etobicoke, he was the first friendly face I saw. And when I walked into my grade seven class and we became friends all throughout high up to high school. And then we, he went to live downtown and I went to stayed in Etobicoke. And then, you know, you go to high school and then you lose track. So we lost track for 25 years. And I got a Facebook account just so that I can find where he was because I only wanted to date people in my local 416 area. If you're not in 416, I can't help you. Undateable. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're not local 416, I can't tell you. I, and I was on a talk show yesterday, they were saying um, with Rachel Lee, where are all the men in Toronto? I'm like, they're there, yeah. but you just got to find them. But he was in Florida, and I'm like, oh, poor guy, can't help you. You are in Florida, and I'm not calling you because you're not 416, right? <laughs> but he found a way that we could talk through Google. Oh, Google, yeah. right? The, Google, the, the, the talk Google Talk thing. Google Talk thing for free. free. I was like, look at God. He's going to bring me somebody not in 416, I have to pay. And he's going to go, no, it's free. There you go. <laughs> and so within a year, he was back in Toronto because he's originally from Toronto. And within a year, we were married. And what I, what I got was the essence of who he was as a kid was the essence of the man. And that's what made me fall more in love with him than when I first met him when I was 12. And it's, it's second marriages for both of you, is that right? Right, yeah. for both of us. And we both, the funny thing is we got together with people we knew from high school. <laughs> and we had wow. two kids. I have a boy and a girl, and he has two boys. And they're same ages. So we got together. We had kids around the same age. And we uh, broke up with those two people around the same time. So our lives really ran parallel for 25 years, and we just didn't know it. And when I decided, uh, you know what, God, I'm going to stop the limits and whoever you send and however long it takes is how long however long it takes. And I will know when that person comes. And so when he showed up on Facebook, I was like, yeah, yes. yeah but you're in Florida. <laughs> but then you know what? He, we found a way to yeah. talk. So yeah. it was kind of cool. You made it work. Made awesome. it work. Awesome. I love that story. Now, Audrey, uh, tell me a little bit about how um, this book resonates with you. And, and what do you think the intention is for the readers? This, when... I mean, you can just see the spark in Fatima, right? She's just this, this feisty, adorable, beautiful, <laughs> so straight woman. And 
for, for myself, when I just heard her and heard them sharing, I saw myself in her stories. And, um, you know, for me, it was, it was all about how can other women, young women, even men, you know, relate to her story and then say, I have the courage to get over my own walls as well. And when Fatima and I, you know, decided, okay, we're going to create this together, um, and, you know, I'm really going to take her story and put it together so that the entire world can understand it, we had this moment where we're not going to just stop here. And it was really about, okay, now how can we spread this as a movement to really have women really declare I am over the wall, like it's a declaration for their life. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I just see myself all over it, right? I mean, going from, you know, being a widow to, you know, losing, you know, a multi-million dollar business. I mean, I've had my walls after walls yes, after walls. Sure. But the one thing that Fatima and I have is we have God. Mm -hmm. You know, we are Amen. two women of faith. Amen. And this that. whole journey was all about, you know, talking to God and say, okay, what do we do next? Yeah. What do we do next? Because yeah. believe me, there was a lot of walls in this project, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot. And um, it's been a blessing for both of us. I got mm -hmm. a best friend out of this. Like, I mean, a truly beautiful bl br best friend. Sister yeah. for life. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Now, uh, tell me about the Over the Wall campaign and, uh, and, and how are you... Um, what is it that you're looking to do in terms of, of getting the stories out? Okay, so one thing that um, we created when we created the book was that the vulnerability to be able to share and not be ashamed of your past. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that holds people back in their lives is shame. And um, to see, you know, an ordinary woman just, you know, become vulnerable and raw. And I mean, if you read the story, it's, it's pretty vivid. You know, there's, there's her details of her life. Mm -hmm. And there's no shame in any of it. Right. And we want to use that as a vehicle for people to say, okay, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. And um, I Am Over the Wall is an opportunity for all types of community leaders to become an ambassador, an I Am Over the Wall ambassador, where they share their expertise, they mentor, they coach, they train and develop other women that are going through are blocked by their own walls in life. And, um, and I mean, Nikki, you're one of them, right? You're someone that we look to to be that ambassador for women that are challenged, right? Because we've both been there. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. And how can people connect with you and, and purchase the book, Fatima? So you can order the book online at www.iamoverthewall, and my information is there, my phone number is there, the address, the email address is also there, so that's www.iamoverthewall.com. And Audrey, um, how do people get in contact with you? You've got a, a few businesses going on. How do they, they meet you on social um, media? They can reach me through uh, Team Synergy, so T-E-A-M-S-Y-N-E-R-G.com, and um, yeah, and they can find us all over social media. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're so thrilled that you have copies of the book here today so people in the audience absolutely. can uh, get your signed copy today and, uh, and get over your walls. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your thank stories. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you for your uh, movement and thank you for your big hearts. You're, you're really um, just uh, embracing the community and doing so much for men and women. So I really appreciate you. So Audrey and Fatima here, thank you very much. Make some noise for them. Thank you. Come back anytime. You're always welcome. We'll be right back.